Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. I'd like to chat with you today about technology trends, how they're affecting our lives and what the future looks like in the light of these amazing developments that are taking place. Now, as many of you know, I worked at Microsoft for 20 years and I've been in the technology business pretty all my life in one way or another. And now I've been working with 60 and Me, you know, 10 years of videos and, and technology. So I'm very comfortable myself with with this trend and this and, and all these things that are going on around us. Many of you are not, and I know that there's a lot of fear and misunderstanding about some of the things that are happening in the world of technology. And I just wanted to run through them with you and um, and answer any questions that you might have to the best of my knowledge. And you know how these kind of groundbreaking technology trends are really going to impact our lives and those of our children and grandchildren. And I think that the thing that inspired this article was knowing that my, my grandkids who are six and four are so much more adept with technology than, than I even am now. They just know what they're doing. They understand the keyboard, they can they, they can type. And in fact, I was chatting with Max just yesterday. Um, I had a t-shirt on that had some cursive writing on it. And it said, um, be real, not perfect. And um, and I, as I was, he said, what does that say? And I was telling him and then he, and he couldn't read the bottom line because it was cursive. And I said to, to him, this is gonna be something that will not be in your life probably. This is cursive. Cursive, let's call it cursive joined up writing and um, you know like you're learning your ABCs and how to print and, and how to on the on the computer but there's a way of joining them up that you use when you're when you're signing your name and everybody has a signature that they create for their name and he didn't quite get it and I understood that probably in his life he will he will print his name maybe when he's signing a check or he will figure out some way of jo doing a joining up if it's still even required I mean, they may not even require a signature anymore because now everything is online. You can sign, um, you know, virtually and um, it's it's different. It's a different world. But let me talk about some of the things that are going on in the world of technology and maybe some of them that you're already familiar with. And, um, you know, just have a little a chat about it and, and, and maybe for me anyway, start to see some of the exciting things about it. I'm excited with all of this. And maybe you have a different point of view, but let's let's go through it. And maybe we can demystify some of it. So first of all, artificial intelligence. Now, there are ethical considerations around this. I know that there's a lot of discussion about, you know, these fake sites that are, are um, you know, um, cloning voices and, and create, you know, basically breaking the law and doing things that are not very ethical. Um, I know all those considerations are in place, but let's talk about um, artificial intelligence as it, as it can help us. Now, generative AI is creating new content across many different platforms. So when we're doing videos or we want to do a description for a video, or we want to do something that's, you know, um, where we just in our own minds just want to save a bit of time. Generative AI has been trained. These AI bots or, or you know, machines have been trained on information that we already have in our libraries, in our books, in our on our websites. And of course, they're getting into trouble with some of this with using pictures and quotes and that kind of thing that are not able to be, shouldn't be copied. But anyway, they're learning. They're learning from the data that we have already in our various you know um, content repositories so they can do text generation or data analysis or research now <clears throat> the way that I sometimes use this if I someone says read should read this book I'll just go on to chat GPT which is the one that I use there's many many different chat devices and say could you give me a brief summary in you know, five paragraphs of this book and then it will tell me that in two seconds what I need to know in order to pick up the book and purchase it. And I use it in that way to get sort of a shortcut to information. So content um, creation is what AI is all about. Education simulation for training. You know, right now people go to YouTube and other places for um, you know, how to do things, how to, how to fix something. But you can do this now with, with artificial intelligence and it can be your guide in learning something and children are learning it as well. It can create, um, you know, um, things that would take you hours in just a couple of minutes. Now, that may not be your idea of a good time, but this is not the world that we're gonna live in forever. This is the world of, of the next generation and they want speed and access to information. So generative AI is all about, um, you know, just gathering content from all the sources that we already have and then reading it back to us in, so it's Google. I mean, if you're comfortable with Google, 
and Bing um, at Microsoft, you should be comfortable with AI because it's exactly what Google does, except that Google just gives you the website links and then you go off and research. ChatGPT or other AIs give you the information. You don't have to even go to, the, although they work in conjunction with other, um, like for example, ChatGPT works with Bing, with Microsoft. So when they can't answer your question specifically, it will go and research for you on the internet. It just saves time. Simple as that. Um, the internet of things is how things are becoming interconnected in our home. Devices are being connected in our homes, smart homes, you know, where you go into the home and you have automatic lighting when you enter a room or for safety, you have lights that come on outside during certain hours. I mean, they're just connected devices in your home that can help you to stay safe. And so that's one definite positive, I think, from the inter internet of things. Um, that you can use it in um, education for for kids. I know during uh, the, you know, the pandemic, there was a lot of use of uh, online education linking to um, devices that can, you know, not just teach you data, but can actually connect, um, you know, equipment and, and devices. Could be used in, in building homes or in architecture. Um, it, so it's, it's connecting devices are physical, you know, a physical device that talks to another physical device, safe thermostat, safety devices in your home. I mean, I can think of lots of different ways that, you know, the Internet of Things connecting of, of, of devices can help you. Another thing that's happening is augmented reality and virtual reality. Now, all augmented reality is taking real world environments and enhancing them. They can be used in gaming, education, travel, um, now you can do this um, with with video. I mean, it's now probably most c commonly, you know, reached through a video. But you can get glasses now, you know, that are going to be able to be put on, and and that allow you to, you know, virtually immerse in a situation or a scene. That's virtual reality. So augmented reality is enhancing the reality. Virtual is where you actually have. An un, you know, a reality shift. And it was funny when I went with uh, my grandkids to this um, uh, game Arama, which is uh, actually a really fascinating place in, in Lucerne. It was um, where you can try old pinball machines and Sonic the Hedgehog and all these, the history of gaming. But then it had some um, situations where you could put glasses on and you could be a pirate and you could be in a real world situation with pirates. And Max was just like over, my grandson was just wow. And that's how it is that the augmented reality and virtual reality um, are these headsets. I think Apple's going, going to have come out with one. I think um, Meta, Facebook is coming out with one. These virtual reality headsets. I know it's scary in a way, but you think about this, you know, I mean, and this is the reality. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to make you feel like, oh my gosh, my life is out of control. But if you're in your 60s and 70s, the world is shifting for the next generation and they, um, you know, they want these fully immersive digital environments. Think about when jobs are replaced by AI. And I know that's like the, 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 the secret, the, the, the visible secret that nobody wants to talk about. It's going to happen that people are going to be working less hours or even in maybe not working. They're going to need ways to be entertained and to entertain themselves. That may sound mindless. It may sound like you don't want that world anymore, but that's where it's going, guys. Um, health tech and wearable devices. This is the one that most people in our community say, oh, I'm interested in this. This is fitness trackers, smart watches uh, for monitoring, monitoring your health. This is when you go to the hospital and at a press of a button, they've got all your information, all your statistics, all your, your latest blood test results and, or to a doctor. So this is health tracking out without a doctor, physical doctor. You can just go online and um, you can, telemedicine is becoming a huge, huge thing. Um, so it's not just health, um, you know, tracking and, and ser helping with surgery and helping with, you know, really <clears throat> complicated uh, procedures, but it's also just keeping yourself healthy on your own from home, on your, on your internet, your smartphone or your device. There's also smart clothing. These are textiles with embodied um, uh, sensors, you know, for health monitoring. So if you've got uh, some disease or a chron chronic illness that can be monitored with a device, you know, like a heart a pacemaker or a, a heart device or a blood pressure monitor, the, the textiles, clothing can actually be embedded with these devices so that you can wear the clothes and know you can look at your sleeve and say, oh, my blood pressure is whatever. Really, really cool. Personalized health apps you know, which give you customized uh, results and uh, recommendations.
telemedicine I've already mentioned where you don't not that you don't need doctors anymore but you can do a lot especially in remote areas of the world where there aren't that many doctors you can do a lot of this now on the internet and there's amazing stories of how this is being uh, leveraged in countries in Africa and other other parts of the world um, you know how tele telemedicine and um, even online surgeries it's amazing <clears throat> robotics this is where the jobs may may go, but robotics, robotics in in manufacturing and technology, building cars, building vehicles, building things we use in our house and in our lives, it's really pot potentially going to change the world of work. But robotics, robots, it's going to happen. <clears throat> Industrial automation, also healthcare robotics. So we, I did a little question the other day about um, would you would you buy one of these little pets? You know these ones that kind of animals that you can hold and hug. And dementia patients really do love them, and they give them a sense of connection to something physical, moving, even though it's a robot. And then of course we, there were lots of funny comments that people left. But well, I'm waiting for the man that's going to come along fully robotic without any without any errors. <laughs> and uh, I'm just kidding. Well, I say just kidding, but. Probably in 20, 30, 40 years, it'll be real. Robotics in general. Pets for comfort, I think I've just mentioned. Renewable energy. I mean, I'm going over my time here because um, I just, there's so much in my notes here. But voice assistants, we, many people use Alexa, Siri. They're just helpers on the journey of knowledge acquisition. Uh, voice assistants and natural language. Um, I've got a really good question for you here to close here. But, and that is, you know, there's apps now where I can attach to a YouTube video that I've done and it will have me speak in another language. I can just do this video and I can say, publish it in German, publish it in Spanish, publish it in Hindi. And this, these tools now will, will take my words and transfer them into the, uh, the common language of the person watching, the, the, the natural language. Do you think this is a good idea? That's my final question for you. Should I be sending, doing my videos and sending them out uh, on channels in other parts of the world in that language. So it's me, it'd be, be me, not, not an avatar or an unreal person, but just me with my voice talking in their language. It could certainly uh, in, impact our numbers and the, the people that are watching us. I, I, I don't know, I've got mixed feelings about it. But anyway, you know, I've talked about so many things where technology is impacting our lives, not just to mention, you know, consumer, um, uh, consumer health and lots of other, you know, automated things now. I know we don't like, <clears throat> your call is very important to us. Please hold on for another two hours. We don't want that. But, you know, but it's going there. And you can, you know, these chats on, on retail sites are super helpful sometimes. But what do you think? Should I be, should I be spend, spend sending out my videos in other languages? I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. Would, I mean, it wouldn't impact your listening to it in English uh, at all, but it would just be a shift for 60 and me. It would be taking us to global exposure in a, in a whole new way. I don't know. What do you think? So anyway, how are you integrating these technologies into your life? Which ones do you feel comfortable with? Which ones are you a little bit nervous about? Which ones will you never use? Please tell us. I really appreciate your feedback. Okay, everybody, we'll go out into the world, shine in this beautiful natural world that isn't going to be affected by technology. The trees are still going to be growing. Flowers will be, will be scented. It will, our lives will, will continue at one level, very humanly. And that's where I like to be with you. Okay, take good care, everybody. Bye for now.